I am so fortunate to have such great sponsors on this channel. Our sponsors, as well as our patrons, are the people who keep the lights on here at Esoteric Atlanta so I can continue delivering videos to you multiple times a week. I am so lucky to be a part of Gnostic TV, to have a SIA as a sponsorship, and to now be sponsored by the incredible Spooky2 company. Spooky2 is like a rife machine generator to help you in your journey through this human experience. If you want more information on Spooky2 and what it can do for you, there will be a video down in the description box. If you would like to purchase Spooky2, there are a few different discounts count codes that you can do, all of which you can, again, find down in the description box below. For the 11 year anniversary of Spooky 2, for particular products that are listed for the anniversary sale, you can get 9% off of these said products by entering Happy Bryce in checkout. For all additional products, the regular products, you can get 5% off by entering Bryce Watson when you check out. Here is a little clip of what Spooky 2 can do for you. Hi, John, Echo, and the Spooky 2 team. This is Kanika here, and I'm here to share not just my and my partner's Spooky 2 journey. Spooky 2 has been superbly special for my partner and I. I'm actually sitting in the scalar field. In our personal experiences, my partner and I have uh, literally gone off all our, our vitamin and multivitamin multivitamin and mineral supplements. We hardly take them. We used to take them to support and supplement our well-being. But I've been using the daily wellness protocol and my hair has just exploded in its growth. The skin's gotten uh, beautiful. The DH experimental frequencies, I've been experimenting with a lot of them. We have such good strength in our body. We don't fall ill to an extent that my partner has hay fever. Peter, he has hay fever, but this time, I've started using the immune super booster and oh my god it is magic uh, we recently this year purchased the remotes as well so we use our DNA clipping and we put our clippings in it and uh, it's just been so beautiful and profound and I have always been so I pray daily I meditate daily and I've been sitting in the scale of feel and meditating and praying and my psychic abilities, my connection to the divine, if I just want to put it in a nutshell, is just increasingly becoming so potent. I've been using the 12 strand DNA activation as well in the DH experimental frequencies just to see how it goes. And the, the effects are so magnificent in our, on our physical bodies and our like um, energetic field. I'm an energy healer. I take clients through um, quantum healing sessions while sitting in the field so that they can also, I can be a clearer conduit and send these energies as well by pure quantum entanglement, right? And if people were to not believe this, all this physical proof shows what a gem of a product this is. I can't like recommend this more to anybody like so yes much love and gratitude thank you for listening and uh, i could share so much more but i'd like to wrap this up now thank you Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. This is a very, very impromptu video. I have like no makeup on. I was planning on just researching today. Actually, I do have a little bit of lipstick on because my mother would kill me if I got on camera with without at least putting some lipstick on. I was just planning on like researching today and editing today, but 
I just thought I'd hop on with you guys, just a little impromptu um, catch up with you guys. And this week has been wild. I tell you wild. I was not planning on being super absent from uh, filming this week. If you've noticed, I've only had one video drop. That was the Monday Anastasia Romanoff Conspiracy Mystery Monday Part 1 that dropped this week. Part 2 will drop this upcoming Monday. And I was going to do some other work this week. Obviously, I was on Aquarius Rising Africa and all that kind of stuff. I did my regular stints on other people's channel. But I got kind of derailed because um, I was informed on Monday. I think it was Monday. Um, I was told, I was sent information that somebody that I tried to help, that I tried to do shows with to help her build her channel, that she had taken a bunch of my work and published it in a book as her work. And I have had to process that. Well, number, not only is that like illegal, like, you know, obviously I have a case and I have evidence that this is all my work. She's also plagiarized Tom Kenyon, Trisha McCannon, um, the Sophia Code. A lot of things, things are plagiarized. They're not sourced. Laura Knight is also plagiarized in this, this particular book. Um, and I'm so appreciative to the people that have reached out to me that sent me the information immediately right when the book was published. A lot of you guys sent me information and that's the silver lining. And so I, I just wanted to um, hop on here and just, um, you know, this week, the situation has felt extremely violating. Like I feel very violated. Um I go from, I mean, my neighbors probably think I'm like wackadoo because like I go from like laughing at the situation to like almost being in tears over the situation. I just, I've been in like a state of shock. Like I, I think part of the shock is I didn't realize people were that stupid, like literally that stupid to plagiarize, to obviously plagiarize somebody else's work. And, and we've, we've gotten the book, we were given the book and we've gone through it and we marked everything that was plagiarized. I'm gonna be sending some stuff to Tom Kenyon because some of Tom Kenyon's work with his books are literally verbatim, sentence by sentence copied. And so I'm gonna be sending some of that to Tom Kenyon, just letting him be aware. I've got somebody working on scanning my videos to take everything that was taken from my videos for the last four years that was directly put in this book. And it wasn't sourced. She didn't source anything. She didn't cite anything. When you, typically when you write a book, like if I were to write a book about all of my spiritual knowledge, I would always source and cite. Like this theory comes from the Yoga Sutras or this theory comes, this theory comes from the Hatha Yoga Pradika, but I would always source it, you know, like Trisha McCannon, when we went through the return of the divine Sophie, if you guys remember, she sourced everything, right? That's what you do. You, you don't steal credit, you know, facts are facts, but ideas belong to people. And so when you're talking about a theory or somebody else's idea, you got to source it. You can't just pretend like it's yours. That's plagiarism. And so I, I just, um, this whole week, I've just been feeling really, really weird and very violated. Like, it really felt like somebody just stole from me, just violated me. I mean, that, that's what happened. It's theft. Yeah, it's, it's theft. But like I said, the silver lining, and I just wanted to thank you guys because the silver lining in all of this is, I hope I don't get emotional. I guess if I get emotional, the good thing is I don't have makeup on, so I don't have my, my eyeliner or my scare running. But I have felt this much love coming from people in a really, really long time. And I am so thankful and grateful to every single person who has reached out to me, every single person who has commented in a group thread. I am so gobsmacked at the amount of support that I have received from this community once people realized what had happened. Once people realized that I had had my work stolen and plagiarized, I, I feel like warriors came out of, of the shadows. And I cannot tell you guys how much I appreciate that. I cannot tell you guys how the emails and the messages that I received from people saying like, oh my God, are you okay? 
this is not cool. I, I just the fact that people gobs and gobs and gobs of people are contacting me and just saying it's just 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 showing that they're aware that that this is my work that was stolen. I I'm so grateful for you. And I guess the lesson in all this is like, don't ever fear sending that email just to tell somebody that you see them and you, you, you know what's going on and, and you know the truth because it's meant the world to me that you guys have reached out in droves to try to comfort me. Um, so many people have been like, what can we do to make this right? And I, that's why I've been kind of MIA this week is I've been trying to figure out what to do to make this right. Um, I've obviously I'm working on a long letter to Amazon to show where everything was stolen because Amazon needs to know that I've been told that that would help um, if, if Amazon has shown that this work, this is stolen work that it would help. I've also, again, I'm reaching out to the other people who've been plagiarized. I mean, the good news too, is I was plagiarized with really big people. So that's the silver lining as well. Like I was plagiarized right beside Tom Kenyon and right beside Laura Knight and right beside Trisha McCannon. So here I am, this little old YouTuber, and here these people are who are best selling New York Times best selling authors, and I was plagiarized right beside them. So that's, you know, that's another silver lining that I guess I can like add that to my resume. That I, I guess my my words are powerful because I was plagiarized with these big people. So so I guess that's that's you know again silver lining. Um, you know my boyfriend uh, got the book as well and was reading through it and he laughed the whole way through it because he said you can tell that this is somebody who has zero experience. They're just literally regurgitating what they've heard, that there's no integrity in this work. And he was like, you know, people that get this book are going to read this book and know that it's not this person's actual work. And the funny thing is, my boyfriend was like, you know, she writes about organic portals in this book. But the funny thing is, we should put in the Yahoo review, this is a this is a book written by an organic portal. Like this is everything that she says an organic portal does is what she did to me. <laughs> It's literally what she did to me. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's the comedy of it all. But we are definitely working on trying to figure out the process of getting stolen work back, The pro legally the process that we have to do to go through to get that work back. I've had so many people um, reach out and tell me their own horror stories with this person. You know, I was aware once I ceased filming with this person, I was aware that she was doing things that were very culty that wasn't cool. And you know, I can't, I can't control what people do. I can't control their opinions. Obviously I don't want to control their opinions, but I can separate myself when I see behavior that I don't think is good. And, um, you know, I just want you guys to know in the healing world, cause I've been in this world for like the spiritual world or the healing world. I've been in this world for 18 years now. Just hear me when I say no, yoga teacher, no Reiki master, no healer needs your social security number. They don't need it. Okay. There's no point. I, there's no reason for me to have your social security number for the Americans, for people who are not American. That's like our government number we're given at birth that we file our taxes under. And that's how people do identity theft is by stealing people's social security numbers. So if you have given your social security number to anybody on Telegram or any YouTuber or this person particularly, I I don't really know. I can't give you any legal advice, obviously, but I would definitely make sure you have like a protection, like a fraud alert. Um, there's tons of companies that do that just to make sure that you don't have your identity stolen or like credit cards open in your name that aren't going to be paid, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I just also want to let you guys know, like when it comes to like pricing for services, now I'm all about people making their money. Like you deserve to be paid for your work. That's an energy exchange. If you believe that you deserve work done for free, then you're on the negative path because there has to be an equal exchange of energy. But there is a point where people can start taking advantage of other people. For example, I am one of the high, highest trained people in the state of Georgia. I'm the only female in the state of Georgia that has this particular level of authorization. And my private lessons to work privately with a student are only $200 an hour. That's it. Most people opt to work with me in a group class, which is what, like, 
at the Shala, our unlimited for monthly unlimited tuition is like 160 drop-ins are like $20, you know, super reasonably priced. Sometimes with con con men and scam artists, grifters, they will charge like thousands of dollars for a service that they're actually not even qualified to give you. So I would just be very mindful of that. You know, if you are paying for a particular service with someone, like a healing service, go and compare prices with other people in the same industry. If you're not sure if, if it's if that's good pricing or not, just go and compare to other people in that industry and just kind of see if they're ballpark the same figure, then okay. Like if you do an intensive, like a multiple month, like let's say you sign up for a three month intensive at like a Shala, that could be around a thousand dollars, could, depending on what all it, it entails. But for like one healing session, it's never going to be more than like I said, I'm $200 for a private lesson, you know, so it's never going to be like thousands of dollars for one healing session. So that's something to look out for just common sense. You know, obviously, people need to be paid for their services, but make sure you're not being scammed. I also really want to reiterate to people this, it is so important. I know I say this all the time, but hopefully this is a lesson. Whoever you're working with, Whoever, whether it be a yoga teacher or a Reiki practitioner or a chiropractor or, I don't know, a, a, a scalar energy person, whoever it is that you have decided to take healing from, make sure, for the love of God, I beg you, make sure that person has a teacher. There is no such thing as somebody teaching themselves how to do something. That is a scam. That is a con. And people don't learn how to do something in a weekend workshop. All right. That's I've spoken out against the yoga teacher trainings. No one becomes a yoga teacher in 200 hours. That's a scam. It takes many years in India to become a teacher. All right. So just be very, again, common sense. Listen, third density, the density that we are in right now, this is the one density that has a veil. This is the one density that has the quantum, that has the astral. Why? Because this is the density of choice. We can't have choice unless we have free will. For some reason, the powers that be in the spiritual world believe that our free will is better navigated if we don't remember. So Pete, we come into this existence with our memories wiped. So with that being said, if we don't have a teacher, if we're not on a certain lineage, because we have these old scriptures, like the Yoga Sutras, the Bhagavad Gita, we have these old scriptures, the Emerald Tablets, that were left for us thousands of years old, to help us remember, to help us go through the journey of re-remembering so that we gain that knowledge, that free will knowledge, and we have the choice, okay? So if somebody is like self-trained, they are in their delusion. They are stuck in imagination. They are in ego. They are not in spirit. Spirituality is not light and love, my friends. Spirituality is brutal. It is Spirituality involves shattering the false sense of self, which causes what we call ego death. In 2017, I spent like a month to three months straight crying every single day. What? Why was I crying? Because I was mourning my own mortality. Because after years of practice, it all of a sudden truly integrated into me that Bryce isn't real. That this is just temporary. And the person that I am in this life is not who I am eternally. And it, I had to mourn that. But once I broke through and I shattered through that, I started to really enjoy my life. Because I'm not, this is just an experience. Like, I can really enjoy the food that I take a bite out of or enjoy feeling the sweat on my skin because it's not permanent. My soul is what's permanent, right? So when you go through that, though, Hillis and I have had many conversations about this. When you're in a true spiritual practice, you're going to be in pain for a while. You're going to be in emotional pain. You're going to be in physical pain. 
it's part of breaking. It's part of the process. It's part of breaking the karma. It's part of re breaking down the patterns in order to create new ones. So don't ever think that spirituality is just floating down the lazy river of light and love. No, my friends. No. Look at marathoners. Now, I know I've talked a lot in the past about exercise being fundamental to spirituality, and it is. And we can go deeper into that. In fact, I'll put a video in the description box that I just recently did with Cindy, my colleague Cindy, about this. But I, I follow one of the, some of the accounts I follow on Instagram. I follow a lot of marathon, marathon accounts, marathon runners. Because more times than most, like nine out of 10 times, a marathon runner isn't training for a marathon for fitness. They're not training for a marathon for any type of reward system. Listen, you can get fitness by running three miles. You're not going to, you don't have to run 26.2 miles to be fit. You can do that in three miles. So why are they doing it? Why are they training for these marathons? Because it's spiritual. It's absolutely spiritual. And if you follow these marathon runner accounts and you, you hear them talk about it, it's 100% what a yoga student goes through, what an Ashtanga person goes through. You are breaking your body down. You are breaking down the patterns that have integrated into the body in order to see the truth through the pain. You have to go into the pain in order to see the truth. And there's a spiritual breakthrough at the end. All right. So with that being said, the reason why I brought that up as an example is we all know we don't, you don't have to be a marathon runner to know that marathon running is painful. You don't have to be an Ashtanga student to know that third series is painful, right? It's because spirituality is pain. There is emotional because we have to break down the illusion and that's part of the ego. And the ego is what experiences the fear. All right. So anyway, so to make a long story short, if there is anybody who is trying to sell you a healing session or anything and they don't have a, they, they didn't go somewhere to train or they just did something online to get certified or they did a weekend course or they taught themselves, red effing flag, red flag. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you know who your teacher's teacher is. You can find every place that I teach my bio is on that website. You can look and see who my teachers are. You can Google my teachers. You can contact the school that I went to in India and get my credentials from them as well. I don't have anything to hide because I've taken the proper path. But people who have something to hide will always hide. Okay? So just be mindful. Like it breaks my heart that there's so many scammers. And I apologize for bringing scammers on my channel. I didn't know I was doing that at the time. And I apologize at this point. I do will not bring any spiritual person on my channel unless I know that they're from a particular, unless I know that they're lineage, unless I know that they have a teacher, that they have um, credentials to be doing what they're doing. When I first opened my channel, I really did not want to do any censorship. So I would just bring people on, even if I had to bite my tongue because I knew what they were saying was bullshit. I didn't want to censor. But the lesson that I've learned from this situation is that having boundaries and taking responsibility for what's on my channel isn't censoring, right? I'm not trying to shut anybody's voice down. I'm just being mindful of what voices are heard on my channel because I, I feel terrible that these people have come on my channel and developed followings in a false system, okay? So in order to course correct all of this, I just really ask that you guys just, first, I hope you accept my apology for bringing these people on my channel. And secondly, I um, hope that you will just research and just remember, research isn't just about deep dives into history or into political stuff. It, research is also researching healers. There's no shame in, in researching me as as a yoga teacher there's no shame in doing that i have no problem with you researching me as a yoga teacher i have nothing to hide this is my legal name i've given you guys all the information many times kpjyi like where i went to school david greig all these teachers i've had you can look on aya's website you can look on sacred gardens website there's i have nothing to hide when it comes to really anything in my life but especially my spiritual journey my 18 years in this field so don't feel like you can't research shalas or research teachers. That it is part of your responsibility to research teachers to know who they're accountable to or healers to know who they are, tarot card readers or any type of, of person you're going to to know who they are accountable to. 
right? Because I'm accountable to my authorization. I'm accountable. I have to be accountable. You want that. You want that within your healer because you don't want your healer going willy nilly and charging you $4,000 for a long distance healing session when they are not even trained to heal. Okay. That's a scam artist. That's a grifter. Anyway, so I, I might be blab blabbing on here, but I just wanted to thank you guys so much for all the support that I've received. I was just saying earlier today that I, it's still, it, it never ceases to amaze me the amount of gross people that are on this planet right now. And I research gross people all day, deep dives, and I'm always still just shocked when stuff like this happens because I would never do that. I try to always give credit where credit is due. I am constantly trying to make sure that you guys understand things from the come from the Cassiopeians or from Laura Knight or from, I quote David Grieg all the time. I'm constantly trying to make sure that I am giving credit where credit is due. I would never want to steal somebody else's idea, never. And I'm just utterly amazed that there are human beings out there that would easily do that and write a book write an effing book full of somebody else's knowledge claiming it as their own i mean you guys the way this book is written it's literally like she took sentences from my videos and just wrote them in the book and the the sad thing is though I, i'm gonna have the book now the sad thing is it's all out of context you know something my boyfriend said he was like she obviously doesn't know what she's talking about because it doesn't make sense the way she's written it. She's never practiced this, so she doesn't make sense. She knows nothing about yoga. She wrote something about yoga, and I was like, you know, not as laughable. What what was in there about yoga? So anyway, and I loved that um, the Scientology tone scales are in the back of the book. Hell, I mean, like I, you're all still from Scientology. <laughs> like it just don't think I. I mean. I think I'd be a little bit afraid to, to steal from Scientology, but, you know, I guess there are people that think they're untouchable and um, Scientology will definitely come touching you if you, if you uh, steal their stuff. So anyway, anyway, I just, I thank you guys so much for, um, for your support. And I thank you guys for being really patient with me this week um, as I try to get my head around everything and my, my, just my, get grounded in what my next step is in, in, um, in trying to, trying to right this wrong. You know, um, I also want to remind you guys that, you know, we're covering the Chad Daybell case over on, um, solutions with Shanti on Wednesdays, put some stuff up on my channel, but we're mainly going through it with solutions. And there's tons of channels out there that are thoroughly going through this case. Hidden true crime is one. They're fantastic. I would love to talk to them. But I wanted to, the reason why I personally wanted to talk about Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow doesn't really have anything to do with the Mormon church. It was more about their delusions because a lot of what Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell believed mirror what a lot of people on Telegram and on YouTube in the truther community believe. And that is that they are some ascended beings that they are like, going to be in charge of the 144,000. They're like God's favorite people and they speak for God and they use their pendulum. Um, they use their pendulum. I have a pendulum right here to ask their pendulum, whether people were dark or light souls because of this, because of the pendulum, at least four people have lost their lives. And that is why Chad Daybell is on trial right now. And Lori Vallow has already been on trial. She was found guilty and she's serving a life sentence. Chad Daybell, his life is on the table. He might get capital punishment. But you guys, a pendulum cannot tell you the value of somebody else's soul. A pendulum, this pendulum reads your energy. It's not reading spirits. It's not reading anything else but your thoughts. So if you don't like a person, the pendulum is going to tell you that they're bad because it's reading your thoughts. The pendulum is, this is not an arbiter of truth. Okay. So a all a pendulum should be used for tomorrow. And I have talked about this. 
all a pendulum should be used for is something that you are not emotionally attached to. Okay, I'll show you guys what I mean. I did this on Aquarius Rising the Africa the other day. So here's my pendulum. So pendulums show me yes. What is yes? So a counterclockwise circle is yes. Thank you, pendulum. Pendulum show me no. What's no? Forwards and back. Thank you, pendulum. So let's see something I'm not. I used this example yesterday. I'll use it again because I'm not I'm not attached to the outcome. Pendulum. Do I need more vitamin C in my diet? No, I don't. Okay, cool. Thank you, pendulum. Pendulum. I've been taking way more electrolytes for my autoimmune. Is that helping my health of the electrolytes? Yes. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Pendulum. So those are things that I'm not emotionally attached to. I don't care. I'm not emotionally attached to if I eat more vitamin C or not. It's not going to, you know, I'm not, my heart's not going to break if the pendulum says, no, you don't need more vitamin C. So that's what this is good for. Because this is going to read the subconscious mind, which knows the truth about that kind of stuff. Again, if it's something you're passionate about in your conscious mind, like, oh, pendulum, does this boy like me? Well, if you want the boy to like you, then the pendulum is going to say yes. There was a long time ago, many years ago, like over 10 years ago, I was dating this guy who was cheating on me. And it was pretty obvious that he was cheating on me, but I didn't want to believe he was cheating on me. So I pulled my pendulum out and I was like, pendulum is, and I said, his name, is he cheating on me? And the pendulum said, no, because I didn't want to believe that he was cheating on me. Okay. And he was, I have proof he was. So just know you guys that this is not going to tell you if, if somebody is good or bad, right? It's not going to tell you. If you feel like somebody is bad, if your gut is telling you somebody is bad, then just don't be around that person, okay? Don't sit there and, and get in groups and try to figure out whether someone is a dark soul or not using a fucking pendulum. This is like the freaking crucible. Like, do you not see how dangerous this is? How evil this is? This does not... This... Uh, God's creation, a human being that God created, their value isn't defined by your damn pendulum. And let's talk about divination abuse. Using pendulums to try to get information on other people is divination abuse. Again, if you don't feel safe around somebody, then just remove yourself from the situation. Do not pendulize that person. Karma will come a call in if you do that. I promise you, karma will come for you if you violate somebody like that. Okay? Do not do it. Also, let's talk about negative polarity, like the law of one. To believe in a pecking order. So if you believe that you're more ascended, or for some reason you're an ascended master, or for some reason you're a demigod, or for some reason you're more valuable then the next person is negative polarity. If you think you're, you're suffering from ascension sick symptoms and other people aren't, that's negative polarity. That's your ego. I beg you guys, please read the law of one. Please, 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 please. Because frankly, and I don't mean to sound rude, but in my opinion, you sound like idiots when you sit there and say, I've got ascension symptoms. To me, I'm like, actually, I think your stomach just hurts because you ate some chili last night. And it is kind of like a, a slap across the face. Like, I've been working my ass off for 18 years. Trust me, all these people, these 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 symptoms that people claim are ascension symptoms, usually those are just symptoms of being sore or being tired. They're, not, they're human bodily functions. And I feel like a lot of people who have not really, like, been athletes or really exercised, they don't understand how many sensations the body can go through that are literally just you being here on this earth. They have no, your ears can ring for no reason except for you got too much wax in your ears. Okay. Go to the doctor, get your ears cleaned. And I don't mean to sound rude with this. I just, I think I'm getting sassy because people are literally losing their lives in other parts of the world because of this same stuff. As JJ Vallow, one of the victims, the seven year old little boy who had autism, who was unalive because the pendulum said that he was a, a dark soul, a zombie. His grandfather came on the camera and said, cut this shit out. So I'm telling you guys, I agree with him. Cut this shit out. You are not ascending right now. You do not have asc 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 ascension, ascension symptoms. 
Your pendulum is not going to tell you who's good and bad. The only thing you can do is work on yourself. You will not go to fourth density before anybody else. The planet has to also go to fourth density. If you, you can't live on this planet if you're in fourth density. That would be like me telling you, you got to now live underwater. You can't live underwater. You don't have gills. Your body isn't made to live underwater. Our bodies right now do not have the DNA to live on a fourth density planet. Okay? They only have the DNA to live on a third density planet. And if you are too distracted living in your ego and in your imagination and in your delusion by thinking that some for, for some reason you're better than everybody else or for some reason you've ascended higher than somebody else or for some reason you are the be all know all you're having these if you're in that delusion in that imagination you are being distracted from the real work and if you are too busy being distracted from the real work guess what you're not going to ascend when the planet ascends because you didn't you didn't learn the lessons. You were too busy over here playing in your imagination and your make believe to actually do the work. So please cut this shit out. When the Cassiopeian said only 3% of the population is actually going to make it to fourth density, I kind of believe them. I believe them. Because so many people are busy playing make believe with their pendulums. They're not even doing the work. You're not even doing the work. You came here. You came here to be in third density. You didn't come here to be a fourth density. You came here to be in third density. So be in third density. And guess what? Guess what, my friends? Third density ain't that bad. We are, Yes, we have polarity. So we have a dark side. There is a dark polarity. But, but as much dark as there is, there's also that much light enjoy it you know in fourth density from what i understand from the law of one and the cassiopeians we eat through our skin we absorb nutrients through our skin now i know some of you probably enjoy food so why are you in a rush to give that up why not take a moment to sit down and enjoy that apple enjoy that banana because when that, that day comes where the we pop forward you might not get that enjoyment anymore. Why not take a moment in these heavier bodies in third density to go take a run and just enjoy feeling the sweat on your skin. Enjoy taking in the oxygen, that fresh oxygen into your lungs. Why not take a moment? You know, I, I heard Dr. John on Hidden True Crime say when he was taught, he's a forensic psychologist and he was talking about Chad Daybell and Lori Ballow and how they were, you know, nothing was ever enough for them. So they're always looking for something more. And that's what got them to this place of delusion. Is your life not enough? He said he was at the, um, the Grand Canyon with his son and he was looking at his little son talk about how beautiful the Grand Canyon is going to be emotional, how beautiful the Grand Canyon is. And he said, his son said, dad, it's so beautiful. And his dad thought, this is enough. This is enough. To have a son that I love, a son that we can stand here at the Grand Canyon and be amazed at its beauty. This is enough. So I'm going to ask you too, if you're busy playing make-believe, if that like triggers you and you think maybe that's me, why are you trying to disassociate from your life now? I know things are rough in the world. I know that we're in a battle right now, but surely to God, there's enough in your day to make you happy, to make you enjoy being in this moment in this body if you live i live in the base base of the appalachian mountains damn those appalachians are beautiful they're gorgeous and those stories that folklore that's fun the rocky mountains are breathtakingly beautiful the ocean every ocean i've ever seen besides maybe the english channel i didn't really like the english channel that much but most oceans i've seen beautiful beautiful have you ever watched birds fly wow wow or, or gone to the park and seen a bunch of kids playing in the sandbox and giggling isn't that enough you came here to third density to be in third density to experience life in this body so experience it i just had a really good croissant it tasted wonderful 
I'm really grateful I got to have that. Wow. How amazing that I have these taste buds in this third density body that can actually taste the savory sensation of a croissant. Wow. Every night I go to bed beside a man who loves me. A man who has gone above and beyond for me. Every night I get to crawl up in the bed and feel safe and protected and loved. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That's my third density. I have a dog that I just am head over heels in love with. A dog that I rescued. He's a rescue from India. Like, what are the odds that I ended up with Robbie? But aren't I a lucky girl? That's the third density. So if you're busy playing make-believe and swinging your pendulum, I my suggestion is to throw it away. Like, my, I hardly ever pick my pendulum up anymore, ever. But if it's causing you problems and it's pulling you into a state of delusion and make-believe, throw it away. Go take a walk outside. Smell the fresh air. Take Stop for a second and feel the sun on your skin. Start an exercise program. You should be exercising anyway. That's part of their density. No excuses. We have people in our shala who have several palsy. You got no excuses. Everybody, listen, listen. Here's another thing that annoys me. I get up super early in the morning to, to do my practice and people are always like, I'm not a morning person. I literally want to slap people across the face when they tell me they're not a morning person. You think I'm a morning person? Do you really think I am? No, I'm disciplined. I understand the benefits and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to, again, sweat and feel the oxygen, oxygen in my body and, and have all the lessons I've learned. Don't dismiss my discipline for your laziness. Let me say that again. Do not dismiss my discipline, my hard work for your laziness. If I can do it, anyone can do it. On Wednesdays, I'm up at 2.30 in the morning without fail every Wednesday because I have an early morning class. Do you think I want to get up when the alarm goes off at 2.30? No. Do I get up when the alarm goes at 2.30? Yes, I do. And it doesn't kill me. I go about my day same as everybody else. Do not excuse my discipline for your laziness or anybody else's. Do not excuse anybody's discipline. If we can do it, that the millions of the people across the world who get up and do this can do it, so can you. So can you. Anyway, so ugh, kind of an all over the place video, but please, guys, use this, use the Chad Daybell and the Lori Vallow case as a wake up call. Do not. Do not place the value of somebody else's soul on a damn pendulum. Not cool. And there will be a price that you will probably have to pay later on if you continue to abuse divination in that way. People have lost their lives over this. This shit has to stop. This make-believe has to stop. When people start losing their lives because of this delusion, it needs to stop. It needs to stop. For the love of God, it needs to stop. And maybe perhaps you are being swayed to a negative polarity by a fourth density negative being because they don't want you to go positive. They want to feed off of you. You're you're their food source. If you go positive, they can't feed off of you anymore. So they want to keep you here in the third density. They don't want you to polarize. I also want to remind you guys, positive beings that are in higher densities of light, they're not going to intervene. Again, read the law of one. We are here for our own free will. They respect our journey. They are not going to intervene. So if you are talking to something with your pendulum and you think that it's a guide or it's a positive ET, it is not. You are being manipulated. Positive extraterrestrials or higher beings will not intervene because they respect your free will. Please read the law of one. Please educate yourself. Knowledge is power. Knowledge protects. Don't be the idiot that runs in circles thinking that you don't need to do the research. And then when everybody else moves moves into fourth density, you got to hang back and do third density again because you were too busy playing make-believe with a fourth density negative being than actually sitting down and grounding yourself and doing the work. Okay, I hope that makes sense. If you guys want more clarity, I know Shanti and I have talked about... Um, doing um do, going through the law of one on 
the on Shanti's channel. Uh, we've still got some more work to do with the Daybell case and Mormonism, but um, I, I absolutely would love to just go through the books with you guys because, you know, this is important. This is really important that you guys take this information and take your sovereign. I, I don't, you know, I don't mind teaching this stuff, but a, a teacher's job is to teach themselves out of a job, right? So at some point, you guys got to take the reins for yourself. Anyway, so I'm probably not going to put comments on this video because I just uploaded one of my um, videos for Gnostic and I got hit with some trolls saying basically like sh trying to shame me for, for joining Gnostic and putting some of my work behind a paywall, which, you know, what a gross human, like gross humans, like claiming that I make all this money on YouTube, which funny, I, I didn't know. Actually, let me, I will pull the comment up because I feel like this is more shit that needs to be that absolutely needs to be um, called out. So I ended up blocking this person. So I have to show you guys the comment from the feed because it's now it's not on my channel anymore. Um, and this person said, XM Savage, I just blocked her because what a gross, despicable human being. Not trying to be rude, but I don't understand why we have to pay to listen now now to information most of us already know and you've been sharing for years. First of all, this whole MedBed episode I just released on Gnostic, I've given my opinion on med beds, but the information that's being shared is from a whistleblower. It's not my information. So it's never been shared on my channel before. And we had to put this information on Gnostic because YouTube would have taken this video down. Um, what's changed? And it basically says you, she said something like you, you've you been making money off of us for, or something like that about how basically implying, I mean, I can't pull it up because obviously it's not, it's not on the channel. It's not on the show anymore because I block, ended up just blocking her because I don't want that nastiness on my channel. Basically, she's implying that she thinks I'm making money off of YouTube. So therefore, why am I putting some of my work behind a paywall? I originally responded, oh, I didn't know that you had access to my finances. I didn't know you knew my finances. If you knew my finances, then you would know that I only make between like $200 and $500 a month off of YouTube. If that $500, it's more like $200. And in fact, if this person ends up watching this video, I will show you guys. You ready? I'm going to show you guys. I, I've already checked. You can't see my, you can only see like the last few digits of my account. So it's fine. Can you guys see that? That's the money I have in my account. I have $36.73 in my checking account and I have $10.40 in my savings account. I don't make money on YouTube. I struggle financially. In fact, when I saw that comment, I started shaking and almost started crying. My car right now, I desperately need a new car, like desperately. And in Atlanta, Georgia, I was laughing with my friend Hillis the other day. You can't exist in Atlanta, Georgia without a car. Like I, where I teach, I, I have to go take the freeway. There's no subway that I can take to where I teach. There's no bus system. Like I have to have a car to do my job outside of YouTube. So I have been in a deep like stress over my vehicle situation. And to see a comment like that, is so disgusting. What a gross human being. I, <laughs> I work like 16 hours a day researching for YouTube and filming and editing. Most of that is done for free. I continue to put at least one or two deep dives a week on my YouTube channel for free. I have a thousand videos, a little over a thousand deep dives on my YouTube channel, all free all free. Are you that narcissistic? Are you that entitled and that selfish to believe that I should be your slave? That I should, I'm your dancing monkey? Are you that idiotic that you think that I should put that much work into something with nothing in return? That I should just go homeless, go without food, go without electricity, just so you get it for free. I ended up blocking this person because what a fucking gross human. What a piece of shit human this person is. And I'm sorry if you're watching this right now. I hope you hear this. I also wonder about your intellect as well. Because I still don't understand. It's common sense. I have bills to pay, just like everybody watching has bills to pay. 
if I can't pay my bills, then I can't create free content for you. So I am grateful that I can drop a video or two on Gnostic once a week. It's only like $3 what to rent the video. It's only like $8 a month to join Gnostic as a whole. It's very cheap. It's cheaper than Netflix. And I guarantee you this woman who left this comment probably has an account with Amazon Prime, probably has an account with Netflix, probably has an account with Hulu, Peacock, that she gladly plays for. But how dare me, a private independent content creator, how dare I charge when these big production companies charge even more money? It's ridiculous. And any more comments like that, I'm just going to block you because you should be ashamed of yourself. Like literally, I told her that when I responded back before I blocked her that she should absolutely be. That's disgusting. Like how were you raised? You rude human being. And, and on top of that, it doesn't matter how much money I make on YouTube. It's my work. I could be making millions of dollars a month off of YouTube, but if I choose to put my work on another platform, that's my choice. It's my work. It's not your work. It's mine. And if I choose to put it on that platform, that is my choice. Now, again, I am grateful to Gnostic because it's allowed me to continue on YouTube because there was a point a few months back before Gnostic came around that I was going to have to give up YouTube and go back to working full time because of money. And then Gnostic came around and then some sponsors came around. So if you enjoy my content, and I hope you do enjoy my content, then maybe be grateful for the fact that me and other content creators on YouTube that you like have these opportunities. Because that's what, because of Gnostic, you ungrateful bitch, I'll just say it, you ungrateful piece of shit. Because of Gnostic, you, you little ungrateful piece of shit, you get free content on YouTube because of Gnostic. Because Gnostic is paying your bill for you. I, I mean, that might sound harsh and it probably does to some people, but that's the reality. And I, again, I want to thank you. I've had so many people. When people leave comments like that, I've had so many of you guys, you awesome, awesome people that will respond to that person and be and, and be like, what the hell are you talking about? Of course, this content creator needs to make money. Of course, they have to pay for their lives. I guarantee you, I guarantee you the person who left that prob that comment probably charges a lot for her work, whatever she does, but then doesn't, you know, it's like rules for thee, but not for me. I mean, totally narcissistic. I think anybody who leaves comments like that obviously has probably has issues with narcissistic personality disorder, because I honestly don't think a intelligent human being with empathy would ever leave a comment like that. Like I would never, like my favorite YouTubers that I watch, if they have a new sponsorship, like I love. Um, Andrew Gold. I love Mormon Stories podcast. If I see they've got a new sponsorship or a new donor, I get excited because that means that I'm going to get to listen to more podcasts because they got somebody paying their bills. Like I'm super excited. I will sit through a five minute commercial on your YouTube channel and be so happy to have that five minute commercial on your YouTube channel because that means that you're getting paid and that means that you're going to be able, because you're getting paid, you're going to be able to create even more content that I love, right? So I am totally fine with sitting through commercials because thank you God that my favorite content creators get to have an, an outlet to pay for them to continue to do YouTube and continue to create podcasts because I'm telling you guys, running a YouTube channel or running a podcast, it ain't easy. It's is a very hard job. It's a very tedious job. I do suffer from burnout from time to time. And I'm actually not next week, but the week after I'm going to be out of town for a week, which I'm actually really looking forward to because I am starting to feel a little bit burnout with research. Just to be honest with you guys, you just kind of hit a wall sometimes. And when I hit those walls, sometimes it is nice to just be away for a week just to kind of like reset myself so I can continue to do what I do. So, um, so anyway, just, I I'm going to take the comments down from this video because of that troll. I just don't want to deal with it, especially this week when I'm already dealing with my plagiarized work being stolen. Um, so anyway, I know this video is a little all over the table, but I just wanted to hop on with no makeup on, no jewelry. I'm a little sweaty, whatever. Um, it's terrible weather outside in Atlanta, Georgia, just to, just to, just to chit chat with you guys. And once again, as much as I vent about the negative that's going on, I, uh, once again, I just, I appreciate the 99.9% .9 of you who are freaking awesome humans. And you have made this journey on YouTube 
so awesome and so incredible. And I just love all the friendships that I've made with you guys that, you know, my EA shadow work group, all you guys, all the different groups that I'm in, all you guys who are constantly leaving comments and, you know, support on the channel, everybody who reached out to me to let me know about the play draw. I mean, you guys have no idea as, 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 as frustrated as I get and as angry as I get with the trolls and the gross people out there, and the negatively, the organic portals out there that, that are, that are hard to deal with. I, that does not negate from the fact that I absolutely am so grateful, so incredibly grateful to the 99.9% .9 of you who are badasses and who are absolutely unbelievable humans and who have literally, I mean, everybody who's done the shadow work challenges that I did a year ago or whatever, I still get emails from you guys like telling me how you're doing and like that you're continuing to do your work. And that makes me so happy. It makes me so happy when I see people like taking their power back and I see people like engaged in their own life and like coming back down into their body. And that just really makes me happy because it's the only reason why I teach what I teach. I, I get frustrated is because I want, it makes me so sad when I see people like in their imagination or in their make believe or in their delusion, like, cause you're missing the beauty of you. You're missing. If you're too busy trying to get to fourth density that you can't be, you can't presently bring your mind to the present with third density, then you are missing the beauty of you. And that's heartbreaking. The beauty of third density, that's heartbreaking. So so anyway, I hope that makes sense, you guys. I um, think I'm going to end this here. I think I'm going to go take a hot Epsom salt bath and read a murder mystery in the bathtub, a, a fictional murder mystery, and be done with this day and be right back tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be doing some filming tomorrow. And again, I've got a, ooh, 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 guys, I've got a juicy, juicy, juicy story that I'm working on right now. Something that my boyfriend actually brought to my attention. I won't say a whole, I keep looking at my notes because I got notes right here. Not going to say too much about it right now. I'm trying to figure out if I can do it on YouTube. It might be a story that I'm going to have to put on Gnostic. I don't know. I've got to figure out how deep I want to go with the story. But this might be multiple parts because of what this, this story is. Anyway, it's got a lot to do with Appalachia, South, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Tennessee. A lot of the places where I've talked about, where we, we talked about where Egypt might have been in the Appalachia, a lot of places in the story cover places that we go to a lot. So there might be multiple parts. I, anyway, I'm really excited about this story. I just, I can't, I don't know where I'm going to put it because again, that's another thing with Gnostic, you guys, most of the stories I put on Gnostic, I can't put on YouTube. Okay. I have to be very careful because YouTube is big brother is watching. Right. So I might have to put this on Gnostic. Um, but I'm going to try, I'm actually going to try to keep this YouTube friendly. It depends on how deep I go in the research. I'll see. I'll probably be filming it next week or at least parts of it next week. So I'll keep you guys posted. If I do have to put it on Gnostic, it would only be a couple of bucks to rent. It just depends on the content of what this, if I, if I have to say certain words in order to tell the story efficiently, it's just all going to depend on that. So anyway, you guys, with that being said, I got super exciting stories coming up again this Monday. I've already loaded up the Anastasia part two about the Anastasia conspiracy we all know that conspiracy. Um, I've already loaded that for Monday. It's set to premiere at 8.55 a.m. Monday morning. The reason why it's set that early is because I will be on with Shanti at 10 a.m. to discuss this, this story. And it's, I think it, that when I loaded it, it was like a little bit, a little over, or excuse me, it's loaded for 8.45. Did I say 55.45 a.m. on Monday morning? Um, it's a little bit over an hour, so I'm hoping that right when it finishes, you'll be able to hop over to Aquarius Rising Africa so you can en engage in the conversation, too. We are finished with the Romanoffs now after Monday. We we did a whole deep dive into the Romanoffs because we were gearing up to this, to this last story of whether Anastasia Romanoff survived or not. And I do give my opinion, and I there's some research that shocked me. When it comes to this particular part of the story. So that will be the last Romanoff video on Monday. And then the next Monday, it there's not going to be a Monday mystery because Shanti and I are going to be speaking to Asia Rain, who is a survivor of the Mormon church. And so we're going to be talking to her next Monday because, you know, we've been doing a lot into the, Mor the Mormons. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think after I get back from my trip, we're going to be looking at the Borgias, uh, especially Cesare Borgia, who is the Jesus painting that 
everybody got in their church. We're going to be looking at the Borgias, a deep dive into them. And probably, I know Shanti wants to look at Spartacus. So we might be doing that as well. Um, and I'm actually looking again, kind of going back to like looking at urban legends too. I've been scouring TikTok to find some really cool urban legends to kind of get into more of like the paranormal stuff again versus just the history deep dives because those are really fun that's my favorite like that's my favorite thing to cover is like the paranormal stuff and the urban legends i always want to know where they come from like where do these urban legends come from so um so we're going to be kind of getting back to that as well so anyway you guys i hope that you're having a wonderful week once again thank you to all the people who are freaking awesome and who have been nothing but kind and supportive your support absolutely means the world to me um this is a team effort i give the research and then you guys you know, when you when you send me those messages of support, it really does mean mean the world to me. And all the rights will eventually, all the wrongs, excuse me, will eventually be righted. So anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend coming up. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye, everybody.